Far Cry 6 is the latest installment in Ubisoft's long-running franchise that dates back to 2004, and although the game has changed a lot since its original installment, it's changed very little between most recent entries. Now, depending on who you ask, this may be a good or bad thing. For me, I've kind of enjoyed Far Cry in the same way I enjoy other open-world Ubisoft games. I think it can make for some good, frantic, mindless fun. Uh, and really, when it boils down to it, I just enjoy scouting out and clearing bases. Everything else to me is kind of just icing. Now, I've played several hours of Far Cry 6 at this point, and I haven't really seen anything that differentiates it from prior entries. Um, you know, there's a new setting and new characters and a few new features here and there. But overall, the structure is remarkably similar to what I remember uh, of recent Far Cry titles. That said, I've still really enjoyed my time with it. I've had an overall fun time with the game so far, even if it does feel like I sort of already played this game. I figure many of you might be curious about the game and whether or not you want to buy or play it. So to try to help you answer that, what I'm going to do is take you through my time with the game and show you what it has to offer as well as give you some of my general thoughts along the way. So with that, let's take a look at the Far Cry 6 experience. The very first thing you are asked to do is pick a difficulty, either action or story mode. Uh, action is the traditional way to play. Story is if you want everything super easy so you can just focus on exploration and narrative. Uh, I pick action because I'm a gamer, duh. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's the, then a few lines of history along with this intro cinematic. This all just sets the stage. Basically, we're at this place called Yara. It's being led by an oppressive dictator that's uh, bent on returning the island to its glory days. And in the process, you know, some people might die here and there. Uh, well, those people don't like this plan. And so a group called the Gorillas is formed to fight back. And the broadcast then cuts out and we're brought into a scene with our main character hanging out with their friends up on this rooftop terrace. Now here's when I get to pick who I want to play as. Both are the same character with the same name. It's just a choice of male or female. Uh, and this is also, interestingly enough, presented by swapping between these two photos on this ID card, which I thought was a cool way to showcase this. So after I pick my character, I then have a chat with my friends, basically about how shit things are, you know, what with the oppressive dictatorship and all. And we argue about what we want to do. Uh, one of my friends wants to join the gorillas, and I want to escape to Miami. I just want to chill on the beach, you know what I mean? Uh, but then things go down, the power is cut, the military rolls in and starts screwing with people in the town. Now my one friend, not too happy to see them, throws a bottle at the soldiers and he pays the ultimate price. Rest in peace, dude. Uh, and then we start the tutorial. Now, I'm supposed to escape the building, but I notice that there's like a knocking on the rooftop door and they're like, you can't escape us, you know? So I was curious if any if anything was actually there. I decided to check it out. So I walk up to the door. The thing just swings open as I bump into it and the guard immediately spots me. I then back out and get shot. And I, I died like five seconds in the tutorial. <laughs> really, um, I did not expect this to happen. I actually kind of appreciate that the threat here wasn't just to build suspense it was real. Although it is funny that I could just push the door open with my body, but the guard couldn't get in. Maybe there's no handle on the other side. Who knows, you know? All right, so let's do the tutorial for real. Um, it starts just by teaching me the basics of stealth mechanics. You know, you can crouch behind cover, try to avoid enemies' line of sight, and then keep an eye out for the detection meter. So I need to stay hidden in order to get past the guards that have swarmed to this building. Things get off to kind of a rough start, Honestly, this wasn't the best first impression for the game. For one, my friend here is floating mid-air while kneeling. That's strange. And then shortly after, we're inside the building and we're trying to do the stealth thing to stay away from the guards. I'm around the corner, but the guard is literally directly on top of my friend. Like, on top of my friend. On one hand, I appreciate that my AI companion isn't breaking my stealth. But at the same time, I find it pretty hilarious that, like, the guard just didn't respond to the existence of my companion right underneath them. Anyways, moving on. Uh, we sneak past the guards, we go around the corner, and here we're given uh, one more reason to hate the occupying military as they harass and eliminate this innocent civilian. Uh, then we sprint across the street into some nearby sewers. It's in here I get my first look at the game's flashlight. I think it looks weird. I I'm not sure what it is about this, but something about the way this is lighting is very off-putting. And I promise 
promise I'm not trying to nitpick here. In fact, generally, I have been enjoying this game. There's just a few things that I'm like, I immediately noticed how bad the way this lights the environment looks. So I figured I would just mention it at least. It's far from a deal breaker, though. And honestly, in the several hours I've played, the flashlight was only needed a handful of times, which makes it even less of a big deal. But something about this looks weird to me. Anyways, moving on, we continue our escape through the city, getting some more examples of why we should hate this occupying military. Uh, we're also introduced to various traversal mechanics, you know, this climbing, mantling, zip lines, and then eventually I reach the boat to make my escape. Now, not but a few minutes into the voyage, the boat is stopped, our captain is shot, and we're boarded by none other than the main villain, Anton Castillo. Uh, he starts giving us a talk about how hard it is being a dictator and all, and he reveals that he's actually here to get his, his son, Diego, who was stowed away on the ship. He was trying to escape, you know, just another teen fighting with his dad. Anton, trying his hardest to teach his son how to be a good dictator, forces him off the ship and orders his guards to sink the ship, then we fade to black. Now we wake up on a beach as luck would have it, we're alive, and our friend is right beside us. Although she's not doing so well, and in her dying breaths, she asks us to find the leader of the gorillas and get revenge on Anton for all he's done. So we grab a nearby machete, we stand up valiantly, and the title card flashes, and it's time for Far Cry. The first objective here is to search the beach for supplies. I find this perfectly placed weapon case with a pistol inside, although it has no ammo, shucks. Um, I pull out my phone, and I appreciate that the game points out how absurd it is that this thing still works. Uh, on the phone is a photo that guides me to the first objective. And along the way there, there's various stuff to collect. I find some like scrap and resources, and this is used later on for the games like crafting and stuff. On the path is also some patrolling guards, and here I learn how to do my stealth takedowns in this Far Cry. Now, I'm not typically the queasy type when it comes to video game violence, but I do think these machete kills are a bit over the top, like especially as a stealth option. I mean, it's fine. You know, it's just a video game. I've played plenty of video games. I'm spending most of the time in here shooting people in the head. I understand. But just something about this is like kind of yikes. But anyways, whatever. It's all for a good cause. <laughs> right, right? Um, so after taking down the guards, here I found my first piece of gear in the game. So these are all uh, parts of a set. There's like a bunch of different gear sets, and each of them will give a bonus that kind of cater to a certain play style. So the first piece I found uh, were these munitions pants, part of the munitions set, and these give improved sidearm ammo reserve. And as you can see here, this is piece one of five in a set. I don't remember if gear sets were a thing in other Far Cry games, but I do really like this. And later on in the playthrough, I find some really cool set options that can really kind of, you can use to tinker and adjust your play style. I, and I really, really think it's pretty cool. I continue moving forward and am introduced to grappling. These can be done at various set locations. You can't do this anywhere, but there will be markers basically where you need them to get up high to certain places. You can go up and down. You can kick off the wall. It's all pretty straightforward. Um, as I'm stumbling through the jungle, I run into a patrol. He blindfolds me and takes me to his camp. And this is where I meet Clara for the first time. She's the leader of the guerrillas. Um, this is the group that's looking to fight back against Castillo and his dictatorship. As for me, I still just want to go to Miami, but she says, hey, you know what? If you help us, us out, we'll get you there. Okay, so great. Fine. I'll do my first mission. I got to look for this character, Juan. He's a bit of a kook, but apparently is an excellent resource. It's also interesting here. I want to point out how they present missions in this game, you get this up close zoom of the NPC who's delivering a few lines about what they want. And then next to them is the quest name, basic information and rewards. It is a little bit jarring as it just pulls you out of the game world to show you this presentation. I'm not sure how I feel about their use of this like faded background instead of just showing the NPC where they are in the actual environment as you're talking to them. You know what I mean? It's kind of more of a style choice that they went with this, but I don't know. I'm just not sure that I like it. Now, before leaving the camp, I uh, decide to explore around for a bit. I find some resources. There's some ammunition. I also get this piece of chest armor. It is the second item in the munitions set, and this one improves soft target blast and armor piercing defenses. 
basically it makes me tank here okay so now i have to head out and find juan he's at a bar in this nearby village he's quite the character don't sell him out is all i really have to say um we're ambushed by some soldiers and this is where i get into our first gunfight all standard fare here you aim down sights you shoot there they they try to teach you that there's a blind fire from behind cover option normally i just enjoy peeking out and aiming down sights like crouching up and down but anyways yeah there is a blind fire option um we're also given access to our first companion his name's guapo the alligator or is he a crocodile i don't know and you can command him to attack enemies he actually causes quite the ruckus so apparently they say don't use him if you're trying to play stealth but still it's pretty cool they're gonna have a bunch of different companions in this game i think in my playtime i unlocked like two or three total um, but yeah guapo is the first now on the way back to camp one asked me if i can steal some supplies for him so there's like this little installment with some enemies there i sneak in eliminate the soldiers with my stealth gruesome machete takedowns and i get the supplies for one and these supplies are actually used to help me out um, also i found a brand new gun up there on top of this watchtower so we go back to camp and one introduces me to the workbench this is where you can mod your weapons with different types of ammunition muzzles and sights so there's ammo that will do things like uh, increased damage to soft targets or pierces armor you can also add various styles of suppressors to your weapons which is my personal favorite i like stealth in these games and there's also multiple scopes available as well all of this is done at the cost of resources that you collect in the world basically like the stuff that i just stole from that camp back there so i put silencers and special ammo on both of my weapons one for soft target and one for armored and I'm good to go. Uh, Juan's got a new quest for me now. He wants me to steal some stuff again, of course. As I'm making my way out of the camp towards the next mission, I find a horse and apparently you can mount up. So I, get, I mount up, I start riding and I'm out on the road just minding my own business i'm on the right side this approaching driver just completely loses his mind it's the funniest shit dude there was like plenty of room on the road for him to keep driving but the guy's like nope i'm out of here he crashes into this light pole and then he rams into this barrier as he's trying to leave this is the kind of stuff that i just love about far cry it's just so funny to me the ridiculous things that can happen now i continue on further down the road and here i'm introduced to my very first checkpoint uh, these are locations that the enemies have set up a checkpoint and they've got road spikes that will blow out any tires they're filled with a bunch of soldiers basically you want to clear these out you have to destroy this billboard and then you can capture the point so i do that i pull out my phone which is how they use uh, which is what they use for scouting enemies in this game it's sort of unrealistic that this would be a good option but that's okay i think it's actually kind of neat that they're just like hey just use your iphone we don't got special goggles or anything for you now while i'm moving to clear out the enemy some more hilarious stuff happens first of all this pickup truck just runs over one of the guards and they do nothing about it they're like well whatever sorry you know just be more careful next time um then i take out two guards at the very front just as this jeep is driving by and they don't notice a thing they're like oh two guys got shot here oh well whatever <laughs> i go around staying in stealth i clear out the remaining enemies i find this key to open a nearby locked door and in there i find some resources as well as a sniper rifle uh, uh, then i blow up the billboard which uh, captures the checkpoint for my side now in doing so this unlocks a fast travel location it gives me access to a scout who will tell me about some nearby interesting points of interest and also it gives you vehicles but at this point i don't really have any vehicles so just a ton of horses show up and they're all hanging out which is kind of cool although unfortunately i found that i don't i haven't really liked riding the horses in first person it feels kind of weird to me so i just stay on foot here after i capture this point Juan radios in and asks me to find a contact of his in the area so i head to this nearby radio tower to scout out now on the way there i find a gear cache with the third piece of the munition set these are boots that will improve my move speed while i'm reloading pretty cool i scale up this tower with my grapple hook and while up top i notice that there's a supply crate nearby so i head on over there's a few guards there i take them out and then I steal the supplies and you get some pretty valuable resources from these these are really nice whenever you see them in the game um, and then I start making my way to Juan's contact and um, I notice this funny sound as I'm walking around now I follow it and then I find this honor idol 
This gives me a bunch of experience and it ranks me up. And in doing so, I unlock access to brand new weapons and gear from Juan. And apparently as you keep leveling, uh, the, you just keep getting more and more of the stuff, which is kind of neat. Also next to the idol, I find another piece of the munitions set. It's this bracelet that will grant more sidearm ammo. I meet up with Juan's contact who gives me a parachute and says, all we need to do is steal some depleted uranium. No big deal, right? Sounds nice and safe and nice and easy. Now, the first step is some bribery. So I approach this double agent and give him a few pesos, and he tells me where to find nearby FND chest. Now, this is going to be a thing in general across the game. You can find these guys, you can bribe them, and they'll basically just reveal locations of chest for you. So I get the intel, I climb up the watchtower, and I'm given the rundown on scouting. Beyond the fact that you can tag enemies with scouting, you also get info about their weaknesses, which this goes back to the different types of ammunitions that we saw earlier. Um, there's also a workbench up here on this tower, so I use it to kit out my recently acquired sniper rifle. I get a silencer and some armor piercing rounds. I also found out here that the game has weapon charms and skins that you can equip as well, so I put a couple of those on and now fully equipped with a set of silenced weapons a new parachute now it's time to infiltrate my first enemy base now I generally prefer to stay stealth in these games it's just how I like doing it so I start out by scouting I try to mark every single enemy in the base I do find that there's an officer in there these are gonna be just like tougher and deadlier they usually have like a key if there's a key and a locked room in in the area as well and besides him there's a handful of the basic soldiers all around so I start by zip lining in from the side of the uh, building like the west side I climb up these vines to get access to a higher level and then I cross through this conveniently open window as I took out one of the guards what I had wanted to do was kind of just toss him out the window so if someone came in the room they wouldn't see him I was kind of disappointed that it didn't seem like I could move with him through the window nor that I could drop him out the window it seems like I could only just just drop him straight on the ground it's kind of not a huge deal but I would have liked if I could do that anyways moving on uh, the base is filled with a ton of resources so I kind of go around picking stuff up I find this key card uh, which gives me access to a locked room I kept sneaking around taking out the rest of the soldiers with my silence weapons I uh, got kind of in a hairy situation as two of them one soldier and the uh, captain were right on top of each other I was a little worried that I was about to like set off the alarms and one of them would get away but it worked out fine I took them both out quickly there was also a security camera in front of the armory room these seem to be at a lot of these bases you have to take those out I'm assuming I haven't got caught by one but I'm assuming if you do it's just going to automatically trigger the alarms so I take out the camera and I then am able to open and enter the locked room and grab the depleted uranium now when I was done here I did keep on exploring the base and I found some more resources uh, I had managed to stay in stealth the entire time so far however I did realize there was one guard left out front at that point, I also remembered my companion Guapo. He was also just chilling out there because I told him to wait. I was like several levels down inside of a bunker at this point, but I, I thought I would just give Command and Guapo to attack. I'd just give it a shot and it worked and it was hilarious. I was just like sitting down here safely out of sight watching as my gator friend demolishes this soldier seeing it all play out through a wall it was just it was pretty funny honestly all right so i then head back to base and meet up with juan he gives me at this point the supremo or supremo uh, it's a special backpack that basically acts as an ultimate now the first one you get access to launches a volley of rockets which is pretty badass there's others you can gain access to there's one that will like self revive you there's one that like acts as like a boost jump with the these flame attachments really really cool addition to the game it also comes with some gadget attachments and on here you can select from various types of grenades and throwables that you want to use uh, you can have four different kinds of these at a time I picked Molotov smoke a scan grenade and then a baseball that I can use to distract enemies in addition to the backpack one gives me access to a flamethrower doesn't exactly fit my stealthy play style, but I'll accept the gift. Thank you, Juan. Um, and the next big quest is to destroy 
this Viviro prison camp. So I'm making my way to the camp and in the process I come across this scout who tells me that there's a nearby cave guarded by spirits with treasure in it. Um, I find the cave in this gully and I just jump in. It's pretty small, has some people praying outside with all sorts of like cryptic markings on the walls. Now I don't find any spirits but I do find two pieces of gear. Alua's heart, which reduces movement noise, and Eternal Dance, which improves throwing weapon damage. Clearly a stealth focus set. I love it. Thank you so much. This chess piece is pretty amazing, honestly. I also get a quest to collect three relics across the island and return them back to this cave. Now, clearly this is meant to be some sort of like long-term progression thing as I don't have access to these areas yet where these other relics are supposed to be. I think this is neat to see though. You see something early in the game that you'll come back to throughout the course of the game. Next, I meet up with Julio. He's one of the gorillas that's going to help me attack this prison camp. Uh, turns out he's also the boyfriend of the friend we lost on the beach and he's really not too happy to be working with us uh, despite that he does offer to still help out for the common good uh, he hands me this helmet that he says will protect us from the poison we're about to be surrounded with I can't make this up the helmet is a plastic jug with two water bottles duct taped together the dude's trying to kill me, I'm, I'm convinced. On the other hand though, he did give me these gloves that automatically put out fire, so that's pretty nice, thank you. So we head to the scouting tower just outside the target. Uh, right next to it is this workbench. This seems to be common in this game. These workbenches are just everywhere, letting you adjust your weapons, the ammunition type, whether or not you want a silencer, whatever. I, th I actually think it's pretty cool. You have pretty ubiquitous access to these benches. Now up in the tower, um, we're scouting out and it seems like we, we come to terms with each other, you know. He sings me a song that he used to sing to his girlfriend. It was a touching moment, honestly. <laughs> uh, we, we form a bond just before the attack, basically. Now, at this point, I'm ready to continue scouting so I can sneak in. Now, Julio, on the other hand, he had different plans. The dude charges in and alerts the entire camp. I'm sitting up there trying to scout with my iPhone. <laughs> the guy's just like going in head first. So I guess so much for, for my stealth plans. I still sit back and I pick off some targets, but then I move in. I find, I'm like, fine, I'll be brave. On the plus side here, I did get to make use of Guapo and he was super effective. I just love sicking him on targets. It's pretty cool. And ultimately this was probably for the best anyway, because because I'm supposed to burn down these crops and blow up these chemical tanks. Don't really know if I was going to be able to do that stealthily. Things got a little hectic as they tend to do in Far Cry games. Like I accidentally set Guapo on fire. I blew myself up a couple of times. The alarms were set off. More, more soldiers keep showing up. It's all right though, I handle it and I eventually destroy enough stuff to complete the mission. And I, after that, I went around and did the typical like looking around for stuff to loot. In the process, I end up finding a side quest. Uh, this was basically just like a little piece of paper with information about a place that I hadn't discovered yet. When you find one of these, it will just mark it on your map, which I think is pretty neat. Now, as I'm leaving, my character actually for a moment broke the fourth wall, making a reference to the fact that I was just burning down stuff with a flamethrower, which is like a Far Cry thing. I thought it was funny. That's the first fourth wall break I've noticed in the game so far, but it was just like, haha, funny moment. After this, I went to check out one of the military target side quests, the thing that I just found. Now, as I was headed over, I also noticed there was some contraband uh, located on the map. So I scalloped this lighthouse and at the top of it, I find this chest. It's like this alligator chest and inside was a unique shotgun. Now, from what I've seen, these special chests will always have unique weapons in them and they've got like special mods as well as their unique skin on them. So it's pretty cool. It's a way of them uh, basically presenting you with a high value weapon. Okay. So I'm back on the ground, I'm headed to the target, and I notice there's a lady being held hostage on the beach. So I take out the, her hostage taker. Uh, saving her, she reveals the location of six Libertad crates. These are the ones that normally have gear set pieces inside. So I'm like, sweet, awesome, because I, I want to check out some more of this stuff. So I move forward though, I go to the fuel depot, I do my scouting thing, I move in to start stealthing, and then I could just completely screw it up. It's fine though, because I was on top of this rooftop and the rooftop did have a ladder to it, but I don't think NPCs in this game know how to climb these ladders. So I just stood up there and moved around, picking off everyone from the corners. Uh, once I cleared it, I also 
also got the storage room key. Um, these seem to be pretty common in these military bases as well. This opens a locked door that'll have stuff inside. So I take out the last enemy, clear the fuel depot. This captures it for my team. It levels me up a bit, which also gives me access to a materials vendor as well as vehicle call-in stations at this location. Once you capture these points, it's it, it gives you a bunch of benefits, basically. I then find the locked storage room, where, which my key opened, and inside there was an LMG. All right, so next I decide, um, after I rescue that lady and she showed me those Libertad crate locations, I wanna go check them out because I wanna see what kind of gear I'm gonna get. So these were scattered all around the map, so I basically just went around from one to the other and picked them up. So, And I'm really glad I did because these crates contained this parkour set. So there was the strap, which improved uh, move speed while weapons were holstered. The cap improved my maximum stamina. The next chest I found actually gave me this Supremo Bond, which is used to, for my special backpack. So clearly not all of these chests give gear, but most of them do. Moving on to the next chest, I got my kicks, which increased my base movement speed, and then the shorts, which greatly increased my move speed after sliding. Having this set, was just insane. I was running around like a madman. I, I just loved it. I loved the feeling of how much this changed and improved my character. And it has me actually really interested in seeing what other kind of sets are available in this game. So far in my playtime, I've, I've unlocked a few different sets, but none of them have been as interesting to me as this parkour set. Although I'm really interested to see what the rest of the stealth set looks like, because you know, I like stealth. <laughs> so after going around and picking up all the chests that got revealed, I just kind of putzed around for a little bit. Um, I went and followed along the main quest line and I don't want to like spoil everything for you. So I'll just tell you, you know, and how's you doing various stuff? Like you got to steal some more stuff. You got to take out some targets. You got to destroy some encampments or some specific equipment. Uh, one thing I did really like um, it was at one point I actually came across and destroyed these anti-air turrets. And then later on in a main story, mission it wanted us to take them out so that we could fly around the small island that we're on and the story dialogue acknowledged that I had already done this I thought that was kind of neat um, we eventually have to clear this ship blockade so that we can leave the island and I do so by stealthing in and taking out every enemy on board and then we go from the small island to the game's big island. Now the game sets us up here by dividing the island into multiple regions. Each region has like one head honcho bad guy as well as a counter group of people fighting against them. And our goal basically is to gain the trust of each of these groups and then ultimately have us all come together so that we can take down the dictatorship. Now on this island is where things really start to open up. But at the same time, I'm also just doing a lot more of what I've been doing here. Everything is just denser. Like there's more stuff everywhere. There's more bases, there's more collectibles, there's more chests, there's more side missions. There's more of everything. I'm doing the main story quest. I'm finding side quests. I'm scavenging for resources. I'm opening chests that have gear and weapons inside. I'm messing around with patrolling soldiers. And really the best thing of all is I'm clearing out the various bases and camps. Now I'm gonna stop the walkthrough here. Ultimately what I wanna say is after playing several hours, I think I'm at like eight hours at this point of total playtime. I have felt like I want to keep playing and spending more time with Far Cry 6. Nothing about the game's formula feels groundbreaking, but I have still enjoyed my time with it. Now, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to finish the game. Uh, there's quite a busy month ahead. There's a lot of games that I want to play, but I had fun when I played Far Cry. Like, I have really, really enjoyed with it, and I, and I probably would if I had the time like to see it out. The game feels well put together. The combat is solid. I've enjoyed enjoyed the stealth mechanics. I wish I could throw that guy out the window, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. And also I should say that I didn't notice any major bugs or performance issues in my time with it. All around, it seems like a decent Far Cry game from what I've played so far. Hopefully my walkthrough and showcase of a bit of what I saw was basically just a good, well, showcase for you to help you see if you're interested in checking out the game. It, it is just another Far Cry game. In a lot of ways, it is just another open world 
old Ubisoft game. So I guess really it comes down to the question of whether or not you're interested in spending $60 for another one of those experiences. Sure, it's in a new location. Sure, there's a few new bells and whistles, but when you boil it all down to the basics, you're doing a lot of the same stuff you've been doing in recent Far Cry games, as well as a lot of open world UB games. But there you go. That is my time with Far Cry 6. That is the Far Cry 6 experience. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.